Hi, welcome friends to Shiny with Marilena Cortez and Mark Sedgwick. I'm so excited today because uh, I have two amazing young uh, men in, that I love and adore here with me at the radio show. So let's go ahead and start with the quote of the day uh, with Mark Sedgwick. Hello everybody. As she said, my name is Mark Sedgwick. Good to see you guys again. I'm excited. Here with my brother, Errol Nolan. Uh, so the quote for today is, in order for you to grow, you have to be able and willing to be uncomfortable. Yes, that's right, Mark. Yes. And you know what? In order to, be, to shine bright and do amazing things in this planet, sometimes, yeah, we do have to be uncomfortable. We have to get out of our comfort zone to be able to shine bright and do amazing things. And as we said last week on our show, we also have to learn to, serve, uh, to surround yourself with amazing people, um, amazing friends and mentors. Uh, with me I have today a very special person, like I said, two amazing boys or young men in my life, Mark Cedric, but also a former student, Errol Nolan. So welcome, Errol, to the show. You have been in my life since you were four years old. Mm -hmm. um, we met at school. I was teaching pre-K. Yeah. Uh, and it was funny because you mentioned, uh, I wasn't sure if it was a bilingual classroom. You spoke a lot of Spanish. Yes, I, it was a bilingual ESL classroom. And they put him in my class. And he was so shy, he wasn't talking at all. And by the end of the, the summer, your mom was like, what is she doing? Like, he, he's talking and he's starting to express himself. Well, little did I know that just a few months later, you, were, you guys were going to be my neighbors. I ended up buying a house with my husband and my daughter was only about a year and a half. And they ended up being my neighbors. And we became friends for eight years. And then when you guys moved, we still stayed together. Definitely. So, um, Errol, you, this boy, the reason I invited Errol is because... He's been uh, an exceptional role model every school, everywhere he's been. Um, he's also been a great kid. I mean, your parents have been so lucky to have you. You are just a good kid all around, you know, obedient, studious, dedicated. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm wearing four rings, one that is from the Olympics. Of what year was that? 2012. 2012. And this is my student who won not just these rings but other rings at the University of Houston when you attended there. Tell us a little bit about that experience and how you got um, into the path of running. The path of running, it started way back in elementary, honestly, to where just, you know, the little foot races to the tree across the way. <laughs> and I used to beat a lot of the kids at the time. I lost to one girl. Whoa. Only, only the girl beat me. <laughs> uh, everybody else I, I won then got in I started running seventh grade and for some reason the 400 chose me the 400 meter that was, the, that was my race mm -hmm. and did that race all the way through seventh grade until 2013 when I f when I first um, gave the track a little break yeah but yeah but that's my path Wow, that's um, today we are talking about the importance of having great parents, uh, amazing role models, the power of a teacher, and the power of the coaches as well. Um, but I want to focus on this first segment on the parents. And Mark, um, you mentioned in the past how you've been inspired by by your dad and by your mom, myself. But um, can you guys ta tell us a little bit about how a parent is so important in a child's life? You guys have both been very successful. You were a runner as well. In your school, you broke school records as well. You were very dedicated and focused. Um, but I know we were the ones taking you guys to this early mor morning, uh, five, 5 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock in the morning, waking up, giving you the breakfast. And not only any breakfast. We had to prepare specific breakfast for you all because mm -hmm. the coaches would say, no this, no that, only this, only that. So let's mm -hmm. talk. Let's start with, um, I don't know, Mark, do you want to start sharing a little um, bit of your experience and then Errol? So, yeah. So, yeah, not only are we, pa are we brothers from uh, childhood, <laughs> but we're brothers, f like, connected in the tree. You know, that's yes. that's what we did. We're runners, right? So I know you, you uh, understand the grind and stuff, and I understand your grind, I know. Uh, but, yeah, about parents, it's like you, these parents impact us so much. They have, like, if they were not there f to support us through, like, those, like, like she said, the 6 a.m. practices in the morning and then 
you know, waking up super early to drop us off, waking up early to make our breakfast or, you know, things like that. I mean, who knows where we would be? You know, maybe we'd be walking to school. Maybe we'd have to, you know, go the extra mile. But, you know, just parents, a good parent is like a super huge support system for for your kid to, like, succeed. And uh, also, as we were talking about uh, ye yesterday about how kids, when they're little babies, they, like, they're sitting there mm -hmm. just like computers, just absorbing information. You may think a, a little kid doesn't doesn't see these things, but they they are literally watching their parents as they are absorbing the information. Because you are their role model. You yes. are a role model to me. My mm -hmm. dad is a role model to me. I watch you guys as growing up, mm -hmm. just observing how y'all behave in certain situations, how you approach people, how you do this, how you do that. Watching my dad run as a kid, that really, he was like a role model to me. Seeing him whoop arrow in a race when I was a little kid, I mean, that was just like crazy. Just seeing his form and seeing the finesse he had just running, it just lit a flame under me because I was inspired by that. So, yeah. That's yeah, that's right. And how about you, Errol? Why don't you share your experience? You also had amazing parents. And actually, maybe they don't even know, but they inspire me to be a good parent because I, I ended up, unfortunately, getting a divorce and I became a single mom. Mm -hmm. But I was watching your mom and dad all the time and how dedicated they were to you as well. Both very hardworking individuals, always trying to give you what you guys needed and it was funny because you guys would come and knock on my door once in a while we were literally neighbors mm -hmm. in the same code we lived on a cul-de-sac and they were my next door neighbors and i remember the first time i saw your mom walking out of the the, the door and we realized oh you're errol's teacher and i'm like oh my god you're errol's mom and <laughs> i remember we just became inseparable uh, and friends and you guys would come almost on a daily basis mm -hmm. i would sometimes even help with homework or feed you, you what was your favorite uh your favorite food was the, the white spaghetti the bought? white spaghetti <laughs> and he was like do you have any white spaghetti i was like yes um i'll make it you know um but your parents were there for you through each of those steps as well. So it's yeah. kind of, I feel like sometimes we just supported each other, mm -hmm. but what are some of the things you remember from your parents that really you are so thankful for? Really just like the foundation they gave us, like the environment that they kept us in. Always, we was always together, we always ate dinner together, we always did everything together. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really, to me, like the foundation to where, like Mark said, watching them watching them be together, watching them grow. Um, I watched them work hard all the time. My mom worked, she come home, she cleaned, she cooked. Then she get our stuff ready for tomorrow for school. My dad, he worked, he worked, mm -hmm. he worked. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but watching that just never, like, you're not gonna get what you want unless you work for it. So to, right. to where, they, where they got to when we moved into your your to be your neighbor, um, pretty sure they had to work to um, to get that get to that new home to um, to keep the home and everything. I see them do it all the time. Nothing came free. They had to do every, everything. But that's just the concept I picked up from it. To where anything I want, I have to work for it mm. at all times. That's right. And and you know what? Um, it, Ray, having children is people should not just have children just because they want to have kids you know I hear a lot of people oh, I want to just have a baby they have no idea what it entails to raise a child I think when people just say I just want a baby or I just want to have a kid um, but it, it, it requires a lot of dedication a lot of sacrifices and a lot of love and time with with those little ones and when Mark was saying that uh, that we were talking about last night I remember Ray putting pillows so he could see me uh, cook I had two cribs one upstairs and one in the kitchen and I remember putting pillows and things so that he could see me and watch me the same thing with your sister she was the first and I learned a lot with your with your sister and um, and I remember you, you guys were so eager even before you could say any words you were looking and watching everything we were doing in the kitchen or in the living room so we are literally 
as parents of first teachers of a child. And I, I cannot um, emphasize that enough. If you're the parent and you're frustrated for things that your kids are doing, step back, look at the history. What kind of parent have you been? What dedication you've been giving your child? How much time and love? Because again, love alone is not enough. You can sit there and say, I love him, I do all these things. But even that is not enough. It requires a lot of s discipline, a lot of planning, a lot of planning, and a lot of um, uh, discussions and communication with them. So it's time to take a break. We'll be right back to continue this amazing conversation with Errol Nolan, um, an Olympian from 2012 Olympics in London, and my son, Mark Sedgwick. Hello, everybody. Welcome back with Shine with Marielena Cortez and Mark Sedgwick. So I got another quote for you guys. It goes, be able to dig into your treasure chest. Um, this one is a funny, weird concept that I, I, uh, I heard and I kind of changed the words in it. But a treasure chest is basically where when you're going through a tough time, you need to be able to look back at your treasure chest, AKA your, the things that you have done in the past where you got through it and you fought and that's your treasure chest so whenever you're going through something tough now you can look at the past things that you've done so that it can push you forward to keep on going it through that hard time so for me when I'm going through something hard like physically I always look back at the times that I was I was having to run seven miles every morning uh, at 6 a.m. practice and just just remembering those times that I had to push myself uh, so I could so I could uh, shine in the races right so I could shine at my at my uh, cross-country meets and my track meets and stuff so that's my treasure chest uh, one of the things in my treasure chest that's one of the one of the gold chips that I got so anytime I'm going through something tough in the weight room or something or or whatever I can always look back and be like are you kidding me what what do you what do you what's wrong with you are you say you you've done that before that's my treasure chest so I look back so Errol I want to know what is what is what is in your treasure chest do you or do you do that do you I relate do. do you ever like are going through something tough and you're like well I've done I've done this before this before I can get all the through time. this all the time yeah so which church chest you talking about the real estate one the track one okay <laughs> um, well Whatever treasure chest you got, what, let's what, talk about whatever. What do you look? What do you look back at and say, I can get through this? Let's talk about the track one first. Okay. <clears throat> so in the track one, um, right now I'm, I'm with a coach, um, Coach Allen. Um, his workouts are brutal, mm -hmm. but I've been through worse. I ran in snow. I ran with socks on my hands. Oh. I ran in way worse conditions and way harder workouts. Mm -hmm. Um. And that workout came from Coach Joe. So I always think back to Coach Joe. Okay. Um, the 30 hills he made us run, the 1,600-meter hills he made us run, the mm -hmm. repeat 300s, the so on, so on. Um, and I always prevailed for some reason. Like, I always pushed myself, even when, when Coach Joe workouts. Like, it doesn't matter who, what the workout is. I'm always going to say, I've been through worse. Yeah. Probably haven't, honestly. But <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But then sometimes you're like trying to go back in that treasure chest. You're like, man, this is super bad. Mm -hmm. And you're like, but I have done this. And you're like, I don't mm -hmm. know, man. This it's, it's harder when it's now, right? Yes. You look back and it's like you don't you don't remember how hard it was, right? Not necessarily. You just remember the pain. You remember. And the you pain, comparing yeah. it to this pain, it's probably more dramatic back then. Yeah. But you know, you've been through worse. Yeah, you remember that you you've you got you've you've been in that situation before, or you've been something something where you in a situation where you had to dig deep in into yourself, into your soul, and be like, I got to get through this because I want to I want to get what I what I want to get right. I want to I want to get that gold medal. You know, I want to mm -hmm. I want to I want to do win. my best. Right, you're gonna win at the end of the day because especially when you have God on your side, you're not gonna fail. Exactly, true. That's right. And um, you know what I was, I was, as you guys were talking, I was still looking and admiring these rings. <laughs> you had to prevail lots of challenges mm -hmm. in order for you to achieve all these rings. Mm -hmm. And, and like I said, it wasn't just four, it's been like nine or 10 in mm -hmm. his career.
career as a runner. Uh, he's gonna go back to run, and there, there's there there they are. There's a picture of them. Um, <laughs> when you first showed me those, I cried. I cried because I have always felt like you're one of my little babies. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you call me what? Mom. He calls me mom, and I feel <laughs> so honored in every accomplishment, everything he does. I feel almost like you're just family. You're part mm -hmm. of the family. And um, so, Mark, you, with the quote you mentioned right now, I mean, mm -hmm. all right now, as so I'm looking at the pictures, your dad, your mom have been amazing mm -hmm. and a very important people, part of your life, not as role models only, also as mentors. And that's something <coughs> we're going to talk about in, in a little bit as well. Uh, Mark, there, there you are with your coach, mm -hmm. another amazing mentor that Definitely. helped you and pushed you to for you to be able to exceed the the and break records as well at the school so the power of a of the teachers the power of the mentors in your life are so needed i mean that we need them we need them i need them as well even mm -hmm. though I'm, I'm you know i'm a grown woman i need those mentors in my life so one of the things i wanted to ask you guys um who has been a role model in your life that uh, or a mentor that you look up to in your, especially in your educational career, mm -hmm. as as NS runners. Uh, I'll, I'll go first. Um, for me, mine is my dad. Um, educational wise, he got his bachelor's. He came, he moved here from Jamaica. Got his bachelor's at HBU. Um, he was big in sports. Um, for him, the way I, I took this story, what he gave me was his. He was also going to be a professional cricket player. Mm -hmm. And um, once I was born, he took the responsibility of caring for the family. Rather than doing this professional sports, mm -hmm. so with that, um, he told me what he did in high school and track and whatnot, and he ran fifty point in high school freshman year. So that was my goal. Wow. I, I want to do what you did. I said yeah. I want to do better than you, so yeah. I'm gonna do forty nine. That's awesome. <laughs> and we so just took we took off from there, really. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what? It was so funny you mentioned HBU because your dad and I went to HBU, I and we. That. <laughs> we actually saw each other, but little did I know that one day that man, I was going to teach his son, <laughs> and I was going to be neighbors with and become really good friends with your mom. I mean, your mom mm -hmm. is one of my really good friends. I love her like a sister. Um, Althea, Nolan, I love you if you're listening. Um, and I'm always, I, I just feel so connected to you guys. Mm -hmm. I think destiny kind of cross our path and mm -hmm. put us together there for a reason. I already told you maybe we're supposed to do something amazing together. Sure. I think we already are. Here we are inspiring people. Hopefully we're inspiring the youth to be the best they can be, never mm -hmm. to give up, to surround yourself with good people. Um, unfortunately, we can't choose our parents, so we're stuck with our parents. So ho <laughs> hopefully you have some amazing parents as well. If you don't, uh, stay strong. Um, mm -hmm. You know, inspire them. Inspire them. I always tell my students, you can inspire your parents, you know, yeah. And they're not on the right track you can inspire your parents but if you're one of those parents that needs a little help it's never too late to change it's never too late to reach out to your kids and and become the best parent you you can be for those kids so you um, don't break them and you make them into amazing uh, responsible uh, adults when they grow up uh, okay. Mark who was your inspiration and your role model so I've had a lot of a lot of different people inspiring me right I've had a lot of good people in my life from my grandma Teresa growing growing up with her and uh, you know her help raising me showing me all about the Bible and stuff learning a lot of lessons from there uh, you know just showing me love you know from her to you inspiring me to now write a book to to growing up with my, you know my dad he's he's been an, an inspiration to me for athletics and you know watching him growing up has always been a, a real blessing you know having somebody to look up to my aunt you know I've, I've had so many so many people I've looked up to my coaches my teachers you know coach love you know he uh, he really pushed me I, I, I always have that that voice in my head still ingrained in my in my head whenever I'm like about to about to finish something difficult but and you're like, man, I don't want to go anymore because you're just tired. You're just, yeah. you're just emotionally drained or physically as well. But you, I just always have that voice in my head telling me, finish, finish. <laughs> so that's, that voice in my head always pushes me Especially to finish. It. <laughs> yeah, it's just that voice has always been there. And now, now it's like ingrained in my head from all those races from him telling me, finish strong, finish strong. So now I just have that ingrained in my head. You know, that's, 
it's just those little things that you pick up from from all these mentors that you have in your life and all these people you look up to you know it's you pick up the the good things and you leave the bad things that's it's as simple as that and you can the, and doing that you will flourish that's mm -hmm. that's how I see it that's right and you know what I just want to mention the difference between being a mentor and being a role model because that's that's two kind of different things mm -hmm. uh, you there's people that can be your role models and mentors as well at the same time but the difference between a role model and a mentor is a mentor is going to be is somebody that knows you and is helping you plan and and leads you as you're uh, on your path to success whatever that may be for you uh, but a role model is somebody you simply look up to mm -hmm. you may not necessarily even know them mm -hmm. sometimes you know we we have our nowadays with technology we have role models that we're watching on mm -hmm. on videos or on on TV or on movies and that might become your role models um, but you don't necessarily know them and they, they may never even speak with you right mm -hmm. but a mentor is somebody that is really there for you guides you and really knows who you are and wants the best for you yeah. so what I wanted um, I encourage everyone everyone out there you're young or old or I wouldn't say old but older um, is find yourself a mentor somebody that you can look up to that you, that knows you that can help you and guide you through some of the those uh, hard roads that sometimes you get stuck on and you need that little pu push and as Mark said you want to hear those voices behind mm -hmm. you as well that are constantly reminding you hey go go finish or don't give up or like I bother Mark sometimes and I'm like where is that book uh, <laughs> yeah. have you been writing so I'm that person pushing Mark right now with his book project and I I hope he sees that is or sees me as his mentor mm -hmm. because I was really I really know him well he's my son and who better than your mom or your dad to be your best mentor in your life and mm -hmm. Errol you mentioned that earlier mm -hmm. that your dad is your mentor because and that's why because he knows you he knows exactly what you need he knows what's best for you and he probably can guide you as well when you get stuck yes. on, on on the road yes. and get discouraged yes and um, I also, also want to add that um, start with a role model when you're looking for a mentor the role models may turn into a mentor because the mentor like you said they may not reach back out to you mm -hmm. they will never be a mentor they'll just be a role model mm -hmm. that's right mm -hmm. yeah and also i want to add one more thing as well to that so the quote i said earlier about uh, gr uh in order to grow you have to get uncomfortable you know be willing to be uncomfortable um i have a uh, a note here saying whenever you are unsure about something uh, do not be afraid to ask an experienced person for their opinion or advice. Mm -hmm. So this is mainly for the older people who have that pride. You know, I feel like as we get older, we, we begin to sort of shy away from asking for advice from people because because of that pride. You're older now. You're like, oh, I don't want to ask that guy for help or advice. Mm -hmm. You know that? Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to grow, you always have to have that beginner mindset and be willing and get uncomfortable be willing to get uncomfortable be willing to have that beginner mindset that not many older people possess that's right and you know what um, you just this is a great way to kinda end the show um, stop and think who's around you stop and think who's surrounding you are surrounding yourself with because people don't usually come to you usually we go to big people mm -hmm. we choose our friends we choose our our role models and we also can choose our, our mentors choose wisely stop and think um, how do you want to be remembered in the planet when you're gone and everything at the end of the day when everything is is history how do you want to be remembered um, stop and and reflect more make time for yourself so you have a clean mind mm -hmm. uh, to be able to make those smart choices of choosing the right people and surrounding your, yourself with the right folks um, is there anything else you would like to end um, to end our show with yeah it's just one more thing like also mentors do not have to be permanent they mm -hmm. also could be something like Mark says somebody you will pick up the good from and leave out the bad so don't think a mentor is going to be your life partner or your life mentor just Pick, just find somebody to look up to, a role model, you like what they're doing, and once you like what they're doing, you get to know them, you may see some things that you may agree with, some things you may not agree with. Mm -hmm. So you pick up the good and leave the bad. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep it moving. What's some, your last words, Mark? Um, well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's powerful stuff, really. Uh, I mean, because you may see somebody that has really good traits and they're really good at something, but at the same time, they go home and they... I don't know, do something 
they shouldn't be doing. Like they mistreat their family, mistreat their kids, but they're really good at running. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you can look up to them for that, but you know, that doesn't mean you have to necessarily take all of their traits and qualities. You can just take the good and leave the bad. So, Agreed. Yeah. Yes. So thank you so much for tuning in. We look forward to your comments. Uh, don't forget to reach out to us via uh, CBBA Radio uh, through Facebook Live or just reach out to us. We're here. Uh, we will continue to shine bright uh, as long as we can because we want to be a light in this world um, and continue to just be the best we can be. So let's continue to shine and we'll see you next Thursday at 5 o'clock. Adios, everybody. Adios. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Adios. Thank <laughs> you.